Our world of work has changed dramatically. In 1950, 80 percent of the jobs in the United States were classified as unskilled. Today, 85 percent of the jobs in America are classified as skilled. My dreams, one day I hope to work for the United Nations. In order to become a teacher, I need to continue on to higher education, so college was definitely part of my plan and my future goals. I motivate myself and what I see around me because I, I get a lot of stereotypes that because of what people see me as, they don't think I could make it very far. If your parents are rich, you're pretty likely to be rich. If your parents are poor, you're pretty likely to be poor. The big exception to that is where college education kicks in. The, the only reliable elevator upward in our socioeconomic system uh, is completion of higher education. College is Possible is a co-production of Admission Possible, helping promising low-income students prepare for and earn admission to college, and TPT's Minnesota Channel. Funding has been provided by Travelers Foundation and the McKnight Foundation. We are competing globally. Um, our children today, when they graduate from high school or college, are not going to be competing for a job in Wisconsin or Iowa or Missouri or New York. They're going to be competing for jobs that are um, taking place in India or China, or that somebody from India or China could actually take away from them. Americans who are 55 to 65 are the most college-educated um, people in the world of their generation. But Americans who are just into the workforce, 25 to 35, are number 10. Preparing students for post-secondary education has got to become the mission of junior and senior high schools. My parents, you know, the expectation was always there that, you know, education is an important tool in order to succeed in life, you know, educate yourself as much as you can. I was fortunate enough to have teachers who told me that I was smart enough to do whatever I wanted to do and that I was able, you know, that I could, you know, go to college and be successful at that. My older brother, who was, I think it was, he was a senior. Um, and seeing him, he's really smart, and seeing him and the steps that he took in order to um, be successful in high school and then in college and excel, I think it was, I, I kind of emulated that, and I'm really competitive, so I always kind of reached to go above and beyond what I knew my brother was going to do. You know, my sisters, they got married at a very young age, and none of them really set that path for me to aim for my goal or aim for something higher than what they've accomplished in their life. I actually decided to move from Milwaukee to go to Carleton because I met a girl that I went to summer camp with on campus when I was doing a tour. And I don't think I would have stayed if I hadn't known somebody the first day that I walked on. It was a really important factor for me in deciding where to go. Our high schools were designed to train the workforce of the industrial age. At the beginning of the 20th century, uh, high school graduation rates were actually in the single digits. Changes in the economy, in particular the emergence of the industrial age and factories, meant that employers needed and uh, citizens needed uh, a higher level of skill to get those jobs. And in part, that was a school reform movement. They created the modern high school that we now mostly still have today. If we can, in the 21st century, um, flip the switch and have a different version of what happened in the 20th, which is to say that now the bar goes from high school for all to post-secondary completion for all. I actually think we have a shot at uh, producing something like the same level of improvement because the notion that I need a post-secondary credential or degree or my kid needs a post-secondary credential or degree to succeed in this economy is something that parents and kids can understand. College is the best opportunity for the cycle of poverty to end. Um, education is the best opportunity for people to improve their standing in the world and build self-confidence and uh, make a mark on the world. We have um, uh, young people um, growing up who have no parent guidance because their parents never had the opportunity for post-secondary education. And um, I'm one of those of a generation ago. I got into college because I had the opportunity, um, what was 4-H, um, having a support group for students to support each other as they work through a process of achieving that goal is really critical. The most successful graduate programs are groups of students who are put together in cohorts 
why aren't we doing that and supporting that more at the middle and high school level? Well, there's a huge disparity uh, between low-income students and upper-income students in who goes to college in America. Uh, low-income students go to college at about one-third the rate of upper-income students. And that results in about 200,000 low-income students who graduate from high school every year with the potential for college, but who never go. Our country really needs these kids to go to college because they're going to be our, our future workforce. And colleges and universities want them because they value them uh, for their diversity and what they bring to the college campus and the college life. Students face a variety of barriers to getting into college. Everything from being a first generation with a family who just sort of doesn't know how to get there and doesn't is sort of intimidated by the process to not seeing themselves as someone who should go to college, not understanding the career opportunities that are connected to that. And so we need sort of a total effort. We need better academics, so we need to make sure that our schools are teaching a college curriculum. Um, we need higher expectations for our kids. We can no longer say in Minnesota or anywhere really in America that a high school degree is enough. You know, we're, we've got groups that are talking about dropout prevention, which is important, but we really have got to be talking about getting every kid onto some kind of post-secondary education. So we have to raise the expectations of our community and our students. I'm a senior at Central Senior High School. Um, I'm attending uh, Mankato University of Minnesota in the fall of 2009. I'm a senior at Central, and next year I'll be going to St. John University. I'm a senior at Central High School, and I will be going to Augsburg College next year. Well, at Central, we work with students, um, first of all, looking at their four-year plan, trying to make sure that they, they know what they need to accomplish in order to, to um, earn the high school diploma. And for a lot of them, they come in um, knowing that they want to do something beyond high school. So it's important that the counselors work with them, um, outside agencies that we have that come in work with them. Uh, we try to get involved with special programs that come and help kids be more college ready. Uh, we have college preparation programs that we think you know, offer a real rigorous course of study for kids, um, which gives them uh, better skills to be successful, and IB is one, AP is another. We also have college in the schools, which are college courses taught on site by our own teachers who have become adjunct professors and they get trained by the, the university. I surround myself with like IB class. It's it's a pretty challenge course, but uh, but uh, you're you're in there with like student who wants to learn, and that really helps you like wanna wanna you know work hard and yeah. My mother's always taught me that education is like the key to success. It's it's all it's what we're put on this earth for is to learn. It's to gain as much knowledge as we possibly can. So I've known that I wanted to go to college since I was. A young girl, but I didn't know how feasible college was <laughs> until I until about like my sophomore year of high school. One thing that's so interesting about a kid needing to be able to go to college is that as long as the presumption is there from the beginning of high school, some of the actual activities don't have to start until junior year. But if there isn't a presumption. If the presumption doesn't come until the end of junior year, it's interestingly difficult to sort of repatch together all the things, take all the tests that need to be taken, um, have students go visit campus, have students think about themselves as a student after the age of 17 or 18. Those are the immeasurables that, that families who, who are wealthier, who have presumed that their children are going to go to college, give their children early on in the process that low income students need to have earlier on. I see as a barrier that really understanding that you belong there, seeing role models, people that have gone to college, having that dialogue with, with uh, adults around this is what it takes. We are trying to spark interest, whatever your interests are, figuring out how is the best way you can capitalize on some of those interests. Uh, interest surveys at the ninth grade level, uh, college tours at the ninth grade level, even if they're community colleges. And you may not look like what people envision a college student would look like, but you belong there. And don't let anyone take that away from you.